Cloud graphics are basically graphics that are using HTML to render dynamic things on a screen in a browser and then writing those frames to video. Many players over the years that are experienced in, in, in graphics have used at one time or another a laptop with a browser with an SDI out or an HDMI out into their workflows. So this is quite a simple and easy thing to do to integrate broadcast, um, uh, high quality graphics into your production. And so if this has been around for so long and these waves of tech do come and go, why did I decide now was the time? Uh, number one, and I wouldn't say these are really in order, but in some sense they probably are. You're all aware of Twitch. There's a Twitch economy that's growing and exploding. It's changing the way that people interact, uh, what kinds of content they, in, they um, watch and also how they interact with that content. Chat and um, emojis and tips are a real part of this environment, so it's a real conversational kind of environment. And that ecosystem has spawned companies, both of which are listed in, in my ecosystem slide that you'll see in a bit, a bit. One of them was called Streamlabs. Streamlabs was just acquired by Logitech for $90 million. Another one's called Stream Elements. And essentially, what both of these companies have done is said, hey, we can create a lot of really interesting graphics and text and interactivity on the screen by simply creating these overlays in HTML and bringing them into the OBS software. OBS software is open broadcast software. Uh, people hopefully are familiar with it. How many are familiar with OBS? Because this is kind of key, right? So I talked about Wirecast and VMAX. This is the open source tool uh, of, of such uh, a type of software. And essentially, Twitch, along with Logitech and NVIDIA, amongst other companies, have just poured a lot of money into this ecosystem. So you have these startups that are basically, um, uh, like I say, Stream Elements, which we'll talk about later, creating these overlays. And they're sort of embedded into the Twitch platform, right? So if you're a Twitch streamer and you want people in your chat, you want to take those chat messages and put them into your screen, that ecosystem is really has had a lot of money poured into it. So that's really important. Second, um, in general, not just Twitch, but live streaming in the influencer economy is another big driver for this. Again, for the same reasons, right? You have these, uh, number three, legal and cultural changes. So I'll, I'll point to a couple of things. We all know that gambling, sports gambling, sports betting is now going to be legal state by state across uh, the nation. And in addition, recently, very recently, there was a ruling by the NC2A that college athletes could not be prevented from making money on their names and likenesses. So that's going to be a huge piece of fuel. This is a influencer economy. It's about the live streaming. It's about the interactivity. So I, I personally predict that the NC2A ruling will have a very big impact. You then also have, like I mentioned, the rise and importance of social media interactivity and chat. I'm going to share a demo. I call it IRL chat. And what I want to just say here is emojis are something that we have laughed about for many years, right? And I used to make jokes about, hey, we're, we're losing language. We're going to go back to the, 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 the time of hier hieroglyphics, which I've never been able to pronounce very well. And the truth is, like, that's happening in real time. Like, even my Outlook app now, not only emojis, but GIFs, right? And so there's just a tremendous uptick, I think, in this whole idea of incorporating these things into our visual language. I'm not making a value judgment on that, by the way, um, whether it's good or bad. But I will say that Slack has been a, a, a force there, bringing more emojis in. And to the point I'm trying to make, there was literally a Wall Street Journal article last month that essentially said, you know what, in the office, it's OK to use emojis here and there you know, along these rules, right? So the idea is like we're becoming, uh, adding more visual language into our communications. I do think that's an important part of this. We have globalization, so more screens and more content in many more places. So if you're distributing content globally and you want to have different languages on that screen, that's one of the major trends, I would say. Number six, I'm going to talk about this more specifically, but there's a game called Kahoot. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but um, I'm going to go through this in the demo, so I won't spend a lot of time on it right now. But a lot of folks know that the app is everything. And a lot of major companies going after major businesses, the app is everything. And so for all these years, essentially, mobile web browsing has been forgotten. And it's really a pretty bad experience for the most part. There is a company called Kahoot, another company called Crowdpur that's also on my list, another company called Quizlet. What are these companies doing? Well, 
They're starting at the educational level. So on back to school night was when I discovered Kahoot. And a teacher in the class asked everybody to pick up their phone. So I'm going to do this in a bit, so you don't have to do this right now. But the point is, if you try to get people to download an app in a game, let's say at a venue, you'll fail. Like nobody wants to do that, never quite works, right? But if you can give them a dead simple, clean web page, no registration required, maybe they would log on to that tool. And the success of Kahoot and Quizlet and this new category of interactive tool kind of was some of the inspiration for me of like, well, maybe there is something else here in this kind of two screen environment, as long as we don't put up all these barriers to people in using the platform, right? So we've all seen these um, patterns come and go, but when they don't work quite right. I always remember in the interactive TV days, um, Dish very early on was heavy in the interactive TV games, and I remember being bullish on it, and it was very exciting. We were in Colorado, a big summit, and Charlie Ergen came to the stage for about 10 minutes. He was gonna give a good presentation. Very dynamic, charismatic guy. But I just remember one thing, which was basically told the entire room that we were all gonna fail, until the loading time for the app would be less than 15 seconds, right? So right now, it was like at that time, it was like you press a button and then you sit and wait, right? So if stuff doesn't work, then you can't really tell whether there will be uptick in the, in the use cases or not. Then we have cloud. I just put that word there in the beginning and then the, the ellipsis, just because I think you guys all know, right? It's on demand, it's global, new ways of configuring where resources are and how they're used. And then finally, open source, which kind of, you know, is fueling a tremendous amount of innovation in every direction. And I would say even here, you literally have, because of Twitch and the Twitch streamers and OBS, you have companies selling OBS on GPU clouds, right? So these are very disruptive trends that I think are going to bring in 2020 a, a renewed interest in some of the activity we're talking about here today. <laughs>